Mermaid Core is having a little bit of a moment right now. You may have seen a couple of the viral TikToks or Xiaohongshu posts or Douyin videos, all featuring the most beautiful, stunning, mermaid-inspired makeup products from a sea beauty brand called Flower Nose. Now, you may have seen my previous video where I tested and reviewed some of the Flower Nose Strawberry Rococo collection, and that collection is like full tea party frou-frou princessy goodness. So now the same brand that has delivered such delicious strawberry princess goodness is now delivering us mermaid princess goodness. And I don't know if anyone else feels this way, but I'm a really big Sailor Moon fan. And I feel like even though this is a mermaid collection, the moonlightness of the Moonlight Mermaid collection is very much giving Moon Kingdom Sailor Moon vibes. And they don't actually come out with that many collections in a year, which is kind of nice because I feel like each one is really special and well thought out and very much anticipated. Anyway, if you haven't seen the previous video or you're new here, hello, I'm Lucy, woman with round face and eyebrow and brain inside sometimes. And Flower Nose actually sent me this surprise box full of some products from the Moonlight Mermaid collection. And I've been very restrained. I've been a very good little rat woman and I haven't tried any of them. So I thought we could try them out together and see what we think. So before we get into the juicy meat of the collection, let's take a look at the trimmings. You know, the little accoutrement, the side dishes that kind of go with the collection just to round it out. This is one of the hand mirrors and they sent me the pink one which is very nice I don't have any hand mirrors like this and I've seen them and I'd always been like they look really pretty but like you know how pretty can they be in person <sighs> it's very pretty oh I haven't actually taken off the plastic yet let's do that Hell yeah. anyway this is stunning and gonna be very handy for me to actually see what I'm doing and then we have these two little hair clips and I'm gonna pop these in. I think these are super cute because they're kind of like a rose goldy light sort of color. And I hate to be like pedantic and stuff, but I do like that they're kind of a more neutral metallic tone. I don't know, I just think it's different. It's fun, it's cute. If they were gold, you know, I wouldn't be into them, but because they're like this sort of neutral color in between, I feel like most people will like it. I like it. Okay, I have all the makeup ready to test. A couple of quick notes. Flower Nose is a cruelty-free makeup brand and the majority of their products are vegan with some exceptions, but they have those particular shades and products outlined on the Q&A section of their website. Okay, starting off with the first product and that is the Moonlight Mermaid setting powder. If there were ever live action Barbie Mermaidia kind of movies, like this is what I would expect the makeup collection to look like. This is a pressed powder and from the photos on the website, it seems like it provides a level of coverage, which I'm a little cautious of since there's only two shades available. But then in some of the reviews, people are talking about how it's transparent. So we'll see how sheer the coverage is. I'm gonna swatch it on my hand just to see. Mmm. The consistency is very silky and smooth, but I would not call that transparent. But let's see how much coverage it actually adds. I'm just gonna take this brush. I actually don't normally powder until the end of my makeup, but because we're filming, we have these uh, lovely lights on. <laughs> I know I will regret that decision if I do not do it first. I did apply it with a brush, but they do have a puff that comes underneath. I don't feel like it adds a ton of coverage with either kind of application. I'm sure if you did a more heavy handed application with the puff, maybe it would do that. But I would definitely describe this as very sheer. I don't feel like it's made a noticeable difference on my face. Again, admittedly, I would say this is a pretty Pretty good color match for me it blended into my hand pretty well but if you weren't close in color i do think you would potentially have some issues with white cast i'm not sure how i feel about the finish i did kind of like a glowy base prep knowing that i was going to be completely matte on top i'm not really like a matte powder matte finish person generally so you kind of have to take my opinion with a grain of salt that it's not really my preference but I don't think it contributed to any cakiness. I do feel like it's smoothly milled. It looks kind of like soft and velvety. I think it's nice. Obviously it comes in a really gorgeous compact. It, it seems to work well for my first impression, but considering it does seem to have a little bit of a tint to it, I hope that they would expand their shade range in the future or do some more transparent options because I'm just not sure how the range would go on darker skin tones. But if you've got this powder and you've tried it, let me know down below what you think. Because I feel like powders are a little harder to judge on first impression compared to like color products. So I have two of the five color jewelry eyeshadow shadow palettes. I have the shades 01 Stella Sand and 02 Celestial Castle. And both of these are the more neutral palettes of the range. 
but I do feel like the 01 Stella Sand is really similar to this one from the Strawberry Rococo collection in the shade Black Current Cold Brew. So I think I'm gonna try 02 Celestial Castle. I would say it's more of like a neutral, neutral palette as opposed to like a cool neutral palette. And here's just a comparison shot of what the 01 Stella Sands looks like next to the one from the Rococo collection. I feel like they're really similar. They're obviously not the same, but if you were looking at getting one or the other, I wouldn't say you need both unless you felt the need to get both. You know what I mean? Now, I really liked the eyeshadow palette from the Rococo collection, so I'm hoping the formula is gonna be the same, especially the glitter. These glitters are like, chef kiss. They're just so velvety and creamy. Those just went on like so velvety. I haven't played too much with C Beauty formulas, but I love the kind of difference of them because I've tried a variety of like J Beauty eyeshadows, K Beauty eyeshadows, Western brand eyeshadows, and these just feel quite unique compared to a lot of what I've tried. But let me know if you want me to try more C Beauty products because I feel like I'm just barely scratching the surface. I'm just gonna go in with the light shade and take it all over my lid. And it's basically the same color as my skin, which I expected, but I do like that actually. As a pale woman I do sometimes have little veiny lids so it's nice to get a little coverage on there. I'm a pretty minimal eyeshadow girly I just find that it suits me best or I feel like I look the best when I apply a more minimal soft eyeshadow look. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna take this sort of more like tawny tan kind of color and just take it like oh okay it was a little pigmented I'll just dot it on the other eye as well. I'm just gonna do a light wash over the top these blend so easily. I feel like they are very beginner friendly. I'm gonna take a little of that shade under my eye as well. That's a little more pigmented. I was worried that was gonna be too orangey, but that added a soft amount of warmth without it being like super like orange, you know? It's like a soft peach kind of. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of this one and just darken up my crease ever so slightly. I'm sure you're wondering with my extreme talent, am I a makeup artist? And surprisingly, no. <laughs> just a little rat woman putting things on her face and speaking from the remaining brain cells that she has left to offer. <laughs> okay, I feel like that's kind of soft and sweet and fun. And mostly even, maybe. Just so we can try all the colors, I'll dip a little into the darkest color and just put that along my lash line. I do intend on doing eyeliner, so this will only look a little odd for a moment. And that is the very soft base look. And it's good that the mattes perform well because they are four fifths of this palette. But I feel like we all agree that the most exciting part of this palette, the remaining 20% is this gorgeous glitter. And let me get a little on my finger. Uh. I don't know how to describe it. It's like a soft champagne-y, tawny brown with like a white, almost violet kind of shimmer. Sea Beauty shimmers are just like chef kiss and I am hoping this one is also gonna be gorgeous because I have really enjoyed using the one I have in the other palette. I'm just gonna do it like, uh, 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 <laughs> oh, that is so pretty. Uh, that is so cute. And that is just with one dip. I haven't dipped my finger back in to the glitter. That's just one dipperino. I'm just gonna buff it a little cause I kind of like it when there's like little bits of glitter up the top. It's a little wonky at the moment, but like, is it a vibe? I kind of feel like it's a vibe. Honestly, you could probably just do like one base crease shadow and then put this on top. Or you could even probably do it alone. I do like a one shadow vibe. Let me add it to the other side. Okay, I thought I was gonna keep it subtle and just keep it like just kind of concentrated on the lid and then slightly diffuse, but then I kind of just put it all over my lid cause I was having too much fun. So I feel like it's gotten a little too high up in some areas. <laughs> Not the most skilled application on my part, but it could be more heinous. Being only five shades like this, it does make it quite easy to create a very cohesive look. If you've tried some of their other eyeshadow palettes, I've tried only the Rococo series. I would say these are basically identical formulas. So I really like this one and I really like this one. Like the neutral colors in this aren't innovative, but if you are a neutral eyeshadow girly and you love the packaging and the theming and you're looking for a quality product, I don't think you'll be disappointed. Okay, I'm super excited for this. This is the eyeliner. It's just the Moonlight Mermaid series eyeliner. It comes in a black, a brown and sort of a glittery pink. I have the brown one, which I'm stoked about because I love me a brown eyeliner. And I'm so excited because it is a brush tip and I love brush tip liners. In my opinion, brush liner supremacy, but that's also because I learnt with a brush liner. I learnt with the Dolly Wink liner, the Japanese one. And I just find it a lot easier to do really fine, thin strokes. And this is such a fine tip and I am so excited. <laughs> also another quick little review note, this has a really nice weight to it. Like it's not heavy, but it's enough that it kind of feels like it will stabilize it a little bit when you're drawing. It just it has a really nice hand 
and feel. Also, what I really appreciate is a lot of their packaging, you know, like this compact is super ornate. And I feel like they could have been really tempted to do some like wand or scepter kind of packaging to kind of go with the theme. But I really like that they kept it simple because I don't personally love like a bulky pen shape. And it just still feels very luxe and has a nice packaging without it being like obtrusive to the actual experience of using the product. I don't know if that was intentional or not, but if it was, I appreciate it. I feel like I'm gonna have red light syndrome doing my eyeliner on camera because it's like, you know, it's like a personal process, but let's see. Okay, look how thin that line is. Skinny. Oh, it's giving scalene. Isosceles, not equilateral for sure. One of those triangle varieties, perhaps. Huh, well, that was very easy. <laughs> I kind of slayed that. And now I have to do the other eye, which is not gonna be as easy. Mom, don't watch. I'm gonna go ahead and say I think that's kind of equal-ish. Or at least it looks even considering the fact that like most humans are not perfectly symmetrical. So just optical illusion-y wise, it looks symmetrical-ish, maybe? That was very easy to use. I am so hyped about this. I think this may potentially be my favorite thing out of everything. And I believe this is only around 20 Australian dollars. Obviously it doesn't have like the full princess packaging that everything else does, but in terms of it just working as a product and being easy to use and being a gorgeous brown color, it seems to be doing all of that. So we'll see how it wears, but I am so into that. Should we, should we do like little lower lashes maybe? Cause it's so thin I feel like it kind of could. This could ruin everything. Okay, I didn't ruin everything. Got a little goofy on the other side, but it's not catastrophic and still pretty cute. And most, if not all eyeliner sins can be remedied with mascara. So I'm just gonna quickly pop a coat of mascara on. This is the Emco Beauty Lash Extend in the brown shade, which I will also put in a little link down below. I think they do ship internationally now. Whenever I put on mascara, I feel like that one line of bubbles from the Powerpuff Girls. I'm gonna be the prettiest girl at the party. See, any sins I committed, absolved, okay? Case dismissed. Okay, now we have the blush. This is the Moonlight Mermaid series jewelry blush. And this is in the shade 03 Coral Jellyfish, which is, surprise, a kind of coral color. I'm quite certain this is going to be a similar, if not the same formula as some of the previous blushes from the range. But yeah, from my previous experience of their blushes, I do feel like it's going to be kind of a blurring and matte type finish. And it's a little bit of a stiffer formula, so a slightly denser brush can kind of come in handy. I don't know if you can really see that. It's a very milky kind of pale color. They do have some other shades which are less kind of milky looking, but they're all kind of like pastel-y tone. This color does look quite orangey in the pan, which makes me a little nervous, but swatched out, it's like a really soft milky peach. But sometimes there's like a corally in between that I quite like, so we'll see if this is one of those. Hmm. <laughs> Mmm, it's starting to show up. It is really lightly pigmented. I'm not obsessed with this one, if I'm gonna be honest. I can concentrate a little bit more on the bottom part to get a little bit more of the pigment. It's super soft in real life. I don't know how much is picking up on camera because I am sitting in front of a big bright light. So it's a little bit different to seeing it in, you know, kind of natural daylight. I don't mind it, but I don't feel like it's gonna be one I'm reaching for because I do like kind of a fresh, dewier cheek. So matte blushes aren't even really my favorite. So do take it with a grain of salt because it's not my particular favorite formula, but it does blend into my skin really nicely. Like I don't think you can really see where there's blush and where there's not. I think it's quite seamless. And maybe I would like this in another color. I'm not like super into this color. Am I being too harsh? Let me know what you think. I think this is just okay. I do actually have the strawberry Rococo one here. This one isn't the gradient type. It's just one color. And this color I really like. It is again that matte formula, but this one has a little bit more pigment to it. And because it's the sort of like really soft, light, neutral baby pink, it does come in hand for a lot of makeup looks for me. So if you were interested in picking up a blush from Flower Nose, I do like the Strawberry Rococo one in O2 Pure Rime, especially if you are a similar skin tone to me, if you're more cool toned, if you're on the fairer end, I do recommend this one. I think it's very pretty and works really well. I keep looking at it, expecting to form a different opinion. It's not bad, it's just not giving me the ooh ah sensation like some other things do. Like that eyeliner, the way it was working, the way it was giving, was giving the ooh ah sensation. This is just kind of giving like mm, sensation. You know, like, uh, uh, uh. okay, before we test the last product, am I giving Moonlight Mermaid? Maybe not with that face. Maybe if I did like a, oh, hang on, it takes a moment for me to like power up sincerity. Like a, ooh. ooh. Is it giving woman who turns to sea foam after she fails in her quest for her love? Spoilers for Hans Christian Andersen fairy tale from centuries ago. Anyway, let's jump into lip color. I feel like 
lip color versus eyeshadow is kind of like the purse versus shoes sort of thing. And I would say I'm more of a lip color person as well as being more of like a bag person. Anyway, we have two shades. We have 03 Starlight Bubble, which is described as a pink champagne kind of vibe. And we have 05 Mermaid's Tears, which is described as a tulip pink shimmer. I'm very excited for this one. I feel like this will be very much my vibe. I feel like this one technically will match the look today, but I want to try on this one first. Now I have tried their other lip gloss formula before. This is the Unicorn. I thought these would be like the same formula, but just different packaging. But they did say on the website, this was meant to be a new and improved formula with oil in water technology. I'm not a cosmetic scientist, but we shall see. Also, I should mention, I don't think any of the other products have any discernible scent, but the lip glosses have a kind of like green apple candy kind of flavor. Anyway, this is 03. Okay, this is different to the other one. This feels less like a gloss and more like a K-beauty style tint and has a lot more visible shine. Let me just scooch in, give you a little, little smooch. Just kidding, this is one way communication and we wanna make sure we have consensual smooches only. So you just look from afar. It's like a dusty peachy kind of color. I'm interested to see how this comes off because it feels kind of tinty. Okay, it didn't leave a huge tint, but I do feel like it left a little bit of a tint. And even though I rubbed it off, I feel like a little bit of like the shine, like the oiliness is sort of left over. Okay, let's try the color that I think is the prettiest one out of all of them. When I looked on the website to kind of look at all the different shades and kind of compare the range, I saw this one and I was like, oh, that's so pretty. And then I was like, oh, that's the one I have. <laughs> Ooh, okay. I feel like on the website, it looked a lot more like Barbie kind of pink. Whereas on me, I feel like it's a lot more of like a natural kind of mid-tone. This looks like an enhanced version of my lip color. I'll do another layer because I do feel like it does build. I'm really, really into this color. That is quite pretty. This is very much in my wheelhouse. I can totally see me wearing this day to day. I do feel like this formula needs a lip liner. Let me wind that back. I don't know if anyone else has this, but I have like a, my lip is here, like the puffiness, the, the fleshiness <laughs> of my lip flesh. This is gonna sound really silly, but if you have this too, you'll know what I mean. My lip 3D fleshiness ends like here, but the color of my lip, or as the scientists, the experts would say, the vermilion border ends a little higher. So when I apply a lip color and I kind of, you know, put it where my lips are, I kind of get this little line down here because that's where my lips are, but the color kind of ends down here. And yes, thank you for holding me in your heart while I tell you about my earthly struggles. It's really not a big deal at all, but when you have a more sheer kind of formula, you tend to see it more and I would tend to put a lip liner there. But this has a little bit of a tint to it. So I feel like as it kind of wears on, it's not as noticeable. And I'm just sort of starting to see the shimmer on this come out too. And that is, oh, that is really pretty. I liked the unicorn lip gloss formula, but this is, yeah, they're right. This is improved. This is way better. Like this is so shiny. It's not sticky at all. It feels really plush. I'm really excited to see how this would wear as well because that is very pretty. And with that, that is all of the Viral Mermaid makeup tested. What are our thoughts? I feel like the shades that they picked for me in the surprise box were very much more on the kind of like soft, natural, glam kind of vibe. So I'm kind of sharing like that side of the collection as opposed to the more like dramatic, like smoky, colorful side. So I hope I kind of did the more like neutral everyday kind of pieces justice. I don't think it'll be a surprise to any of you that my two favorite things are the lip gloss and the eyeliner. The eyeliner especially, I feel like this one's like a really good get. I just feel like it was very easy to use. It applied beautifully. Like the first impressions on this are very, very, very strong. And then the lip gloss, the new formula, like they really meant it. It is quite different to the old one. So if you've tried the old one, you're kind of like, it's not really giving the ooh ah sensation. I feel like this one is more ooh ah sensation coded. <laughs> and then again, I feel like the eyeshadow formula is really great. If you love the packaging, if you love the color range, I think you will be very happy. Little less settled on the powder products. Again, it could be very much a preference thing. I'm not a big full matte girly. So my experience and range of testing things, I tend to be more on the kind of luminous sort of side. So it's not my area of expertise. It's not my realm. So I'm gonna keep testing them, but I'm not gonna be like, these are the best, these are my favorites, because they're not, they're not. <laughs> anyway, big thank you to Flower Nose for sending me these things to try out and test. I hope we've had like a fun little testing sesh. Just the two of us, or how many people watch the video, I'm not really sure, but it feels like the two of us except that it's just me with the camera and a ring light. Let me know if you want to test and try some other makeup together. I'm feeling like there's a lot of like TikTok products that do catch my eye and I kind of want to do like a random roundup of like the most talked about ones. But if you have any specific ones, let me know in the comments below. And actually speaking of TikTok, I do do like little mini reviews and things over there. So if you haven't checked me out on there, on the vertical video app, then I'm there, you know. But otherwise leave me a little uh, tip off if you have any products that you feel like 
need to be tested by a rat woman with average level consumer skills. Because I think I know a gal. It's me. And as always, thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.